Ontario, in many ways, is a bit like New South Wales. It's the most populous state in Canada. Its capital, Toronto, is the biggest city in Canada. But right now, Ontario is rapidly expanding its nuclear capacity to create business investment and also to meet and exceed its emissions targets. Nuclear energy, of course, will be a significant point of difference between the Labor government and the coalition at the next election. Labor's climate change and energy minister Chris Bowen says nuclear is too expensive and will take too long to develop compared with renewable energy. But is that right? Well, let's find out by exploring just what's happening on the ground in Ontario. A little earlier, I spoke with its energy minister, Todd Smith. We have uh, about 50 to 60 percent of our power comes from our nuclear fleet that we currently have at the 18 can-do reactors that we have in the Toronto area and also on the western side of the province. But because of the success we've had in refurbishing the can-do reactors, multi-billion dollar projects on time, actually ahead of schedule and uh, on budget. It's given us as the government of Ontario the confidence to move forward with expanding our nuclear profile, and that includes an extra five gigawatts at what is already the world's largest operating nuclear facility at Bruce Power. And then at Ontario Power Generation, which is our crown corporation, uh, we're refurbishing a number of the can-do reactors, but we're also at the forefront in the Western world in building a small modular reactor. Construction is already underway, and we're going to be building four of these 300 megawatt GE Atachi BWRX 300s on site at the Darlington reactor just outside uh, Toronto. So that's another 1.2 gigawatts of electricity or enough power to power 1.5 uh, million homes. So your state almost equates to our New South Wales, where Sydney is, because it has the biggest city in terms of Toronto. It's got about 45% oh, of, of Canada's population lives in your state. Um, and so this is a reason why having reliable energy, a, a reliable source of energy, is so important for your country, isn't it? Yes, and it's it's why we're seeing uh, investments in our prov uh, province at a record rate. Uh, we're getting multi-billion dollar investments from automakers, EV battery manufacturers, uh, electric arc furnaces at our steel making facilities to produce green steel. It's why our population is growing as fast as it is, is because we have reliable, affordable electricity that comes from our nuclear facilities, our hydro facilities as well. And, uh, you know, we're preparing for the future so we can continue to see these types of investments and uh, growth in our province. OK, so you would know of the debate in Australia. Australia has never had a mandate for nuclear energy. That comes from a federal mandate, a federal ban on all nuclear-generated energy. Now, you hear, say, for example, from the Climate Council that um, nuclear energy, even if we were to go that way, it is too expensive and it would take too long to make a significant difference either, A, to our energy output or, B, to the climate change results that Australia is seeking. Well, you know, what I could tell you is that we're building a small modular reactor right now at Darlington. Uh, we put shovels in the ground in 2022. We expect to have that small modular reactor producing electricity by late 2028, early 29. Uh, so this is also going to be a modular build. We're going to be able to produce these faster once that first of a kind is complete at Darlington. And we'll be able to deploy these at sites uh, right across the province, potentially. One of the things that we have been able to do is eliminate coal uh, from our system. And I know that's something that uh, you're aiming to do in Australia as well. And the biggest reason why we were able to eliminate coal was because we have that reliable baseload emissions-free nuclear fleet that we continue to build on to ensure that we have a green system in Ontario. And it's one of the cleanest electricity grids in the entire world at about 90% emissions-free. Uh, so it's a great story. It's helped us eliminate coal from our system. And it's really only the nuclear investments that have allowed us to do that. While maintaining maintaining an affordable grid that's drawing in all kinds of foreign direct investment, as I mentioned earlier.